What's up guys, Rick here with your preview for this week's Rocket Mortgage Classic. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, clearly not at home, still on the road in Denver. It's treating us very well. We'll be home before you know it for that 3 p.m. Eastern time, Wednesday, live chat, normal time, normal place, all that fun stuff. We will see you there. Hopefully the audio is good enough for us to get through this. We've got the, uh, you know, all the travel stuff in place, but let's not waste any more time. Let's focus on Detroit and jump right into this. Detroit Golf Club. This is from the course key stats on my website, rickrungood.com. Everything you see from here on out will be from my website. And there's going to be a lot of things that you hear about Detroit Golf Club, and they're probably all very true. It's it's the flattest course on the PGA Tour schedule. That's by shot length. That is not my opinion. It is also a golf course that allows you to bomb and gouge. If you look at past winners there or guys that have had success, that's the way to do it. You can hit it um, basically anywhere you want without much penalty. The fairways, uh, especially this time around, seem to be a little bit softer, which are going to hold some of those shots. Um, there's not very penal rough, and then you're going to end up hitting a lot of wedges in and see how many birdies that you can make. Scoring conditions are usually prime for birdies, eagles, or that devious little 3-1-3 challenge that no one has, I, I don't think anybody has ever accomplished, and I'm, I'm not sure they ever will. I think it's, uh, it's like eagle, ace, birdie on three consecutive holes, on specific holes. It's it's fairly insane. But anyway, um, you look at the scoring averages from, from last year, there are just a lot of ways that these golfers are going to pick it apart. If you look at the uh, correlation model here, there's not really a lot that jumps off at you from the driving accuracy, driving distance, the, the strokes gain metrics. It does ask for the best player, strokes gain total, highly correlated to success at this event. But if you look at some of the secondary statistics, it, it will begin to tell a little bit of a, of a story. And there's a reason that these are not great primary stats, but you add up a couple of them and you see um, that the story begins to tell itself. So some of the more highly correlated stats of success. Approaches from 150 to 175 in the rough. Approaches from 250 to 275 in the rough. On their own, those are pretty bad stats, pretty noisy stats. Um, then you get putting from nine feet, again, pretty noisy, pretty bad. Uh, total putting and total birdies. So those are the top five secondary stats. So while they're individually not very good, you do get stats that say, okay, um, hit it anywhere you want off the tee because there's a strong correlation to approaches that are coming from the rough in general. And then total putting, uh, putting from nine feet, which is a, a great range where, where golfers on the PGA Tour uh, have a lot of their birdie putts from, and then total birdies, that says this is going to be a scoring fest. And then uh, as you continue to go down that list, scrambling from 10 to 20 yards, that's likely on the, on the par fives, greens and regulation, par three scoring average, putting from five feet, consecutive greens and regulation. We are talking about scoring metrics here. That is what we're talking about. So if you take all of that information and you begin to overlay it over the last 36 rounds for every golfer in this field, you can look at the adjusted fit for these players. And Taylor Pendrith, to probably no one's surprise, has one of the best adjusted course fits for Detroit Golf Club. I think I said this for Cam Davis a couple of years ago. He ended up winning the golf tournament. So I've generally retired this phrase, but if I could create a golf course for Taylor Pendrith, it would look a lot like Detroit Golf Club, right? And, and the, the stats bear it out. The regression model bears it out. Again, I have no opinion in this regression. This is all, these are just number. I have zero opinion in this. Um, and then I take the stats that everybody has and, and multiply. This is just math and Taylor Pendrith comes out on top. SH Kim is number two. He does it in a little bit of a different way. He gets a lot of bumps on his putting um, from those ranges. He, he gets actually knocked on uh, all the tee to green metrics except, or excuse me, all the tee to green metrics, but they're, they're small knocks for him. Robert McIntyre, Alex Noren, and Maverick McNeely round out the top five. They're probably golfers that, that we're going to talk about um, quite a bit here. So we'll, we'll, we won't need to spend too much time on on those guys um there is something interesting that is going on with the salaries for this week so we have tom kim leading the the quartet of golfers above ten thousand dollars it's tom kim cam young minwoo lee and alex norin and tom kim is eleven thousand dollars so we've been living in a world with signature events and major championships and scotty scheffler where we've been getting someone who is 12.5, 12.8, $13,000 um, frequently 
week in and week out, to, there, there is a little bit of a, a reprieve here at $11,000 for Tom Kim being the most expensive golfer. And we've got to figure out if what we've seen from Tom Kim over the course of the last couple of weeks is, is fool's gold or if it is actual gold, right? And we've got those similar questions about Cam Young. So let's let's start there with Tom Kim. Um, obviously, losing in a playoff to Scotty Scheffler is both bad and both very good. If you look at his stat profile from last week, and actually we can do this. Let's go to the Holy Grail. Let's go to 2024 and do the tournament, which was the Travelers. And we will just sort this by most strokes gained. So we should get Tom Kim and Scotty Scheffler tied at the top. And we do. Look at how similar these guys played last week. Scotty Scheffler gained 0.97 strokes per round off the tee. Tom Kim was 0.92. Scotty was 1.09 on approach. Tom Kim was a little bit better. 1.32 on approach. Around the green, they were nearly identical 0.43 and 0.36 putting 0.64 and 0.52 i mean they were nearly identical players last week entirety throughout the bag in terms of uh, all four of the strokes gain metrics through regulation and then of course uh scotty gets him in a playoff after tom kim hits hits kind of a weak approach into the 18th green there to that to that front right uh pin location but that's a really good sign for tom kim and it's it, it speaks about um sustainability right if you put up a stat line any week that looks like Scotty Scheffler's, you're doing very, very well. And this goes back to, uh, I would say, the Canadian Open. He has now gained a lot of strokes on approach at least four and a half, three times in his last four starts. He's driving it well. I think he's a, a, a tad longer than I remember what we've seen from previous years, but he's finding the fairway a lot. He will, um, you know, there's, there's, it's, it's not the travelers where it's 7,000 yards. It's, it's not like you're going to have like a Mirfield village or something where it's, where it's very penal. Um, if, if you miss the fairway, but you know, I, I expect he's going to be giving himself a lot of opportunities. And then uh, you look at the putting metrics, which have started to turn around. So I'm, I'm pretty uh, smitten here with Tom Kim. I'm, I'm okay with this. His, his history at the Rocket Mortgage is a little bit of a mixed bag. He missed the cut here last year. That was, I believe, during a time where he wasn't playing particularly well. In 2022, he finished seventh, gained a ton of strokes on approach. So this is certainly a place that can catch his eye. Uh, the the, the a decision you're probably going to make at the top of the board a lot is do you want to play Tom Kim or do you want to play Cam Young? I should probably point out and I don't think it matters. He's like a, a, an infant. He's 22 years old and seems to have a ton of energy. But Tom Kim has played, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This will be nine weeks in a row. It's a lot. Akshay is on a similar, a, a similar uh, schedule. And it's again, it didn't hurt him in start eight. It didn't hurt him in start seven. It didn't hurt him in start five. You know what I mean? So I'm not too worried about that. Um, just something that I thought was, was worth pointing out. Here's Cam Young. And, you know, he does this thing where he goes out, he plays incredibly well, including shooting a 59 at the Travelers Championship. He has a new um, putter in the bag. So it's just a, a different model of, I believe, the same putter. It's, it's kind of blacked out. They do not have, uh, I believe, the alignment on top of it. So there is a, a little bit of a change there. He puts to a zero last week with it. Loses three strokes in round number one, gains 2.2 in round number three, and then basically even the other two rounds. I'm not ready to declare Cam Young back just yet, though this is uh, probably a much better setup for Cam Young at Detroit Golf Club than it is for Tom Kim at Detroit Golf Club. Yeah, this was one of the many runner-up finishes that Cam Young had in 2022. That was his rookie year. I I'm, um, I'm assuming, and I could be wrong, that Cam Young, because he is cheaper, because he does not have the pace of play issues, because he shot a 59 last week, because he had a runner-up finish in his only start, is going to be more popular than Tom Kim. And if that is uh, a, a tangible, like a significant amount, I would have no problem spending the extra $300 and, and going to Tom Kim. Minwoo Lee is next. And I was a little bit surprised, admittedly, to see that he was the third most expensive golfer. If you wanted to stick Norin here, Batia here, even Taylor Pendrith here, I would have been okay with that. Uh, it's not a knock against Minwoo. It's just that his results have been good, not great. Uh, I think that this is an okay 
fit for him. We are starting to see better play. Since his miscut at the Valspar, he has essentially five consecutive top 25 finishes, though all of them are 21st or worse. So five consecutive finishes, 21st to 26th. He drives it awesome, which if you look at his, you know, his club head speed and his distance from edge of fairway, considering the, how far he hits it and how inaccurately he hits it, this is a really good spot for him. One of the concerns that we had earlier in the year, and I still do have this concern, is, is what is he going to do on the second shot, right? You know, there were times, and there's been plenty of times this year, he's lost strokes on approach. He started to right the ship a little bit. He, he gave some back nearly four at Pinehurst. I don't, I'm not going to kill anybody for that. So he gives, gives back um, four of them at, at, at Pinehurst, but he was starting to get closer to zero. This is a a game of opportunity. You know, how many opportunities are you going to give yourself this week from those makeable ranges? Unfortunately, Minwoo doesn't give himself a ton of opportunities. Um, and, and when he does, he, he is better than his peers from farther out, 175 to 200, 200 to 225, because it goes back to that club speed. It goes back to that really great long game. The, the shorter we get, the worse we get for Minwoo. So those are all concerns. So I'm still basically feeling uh, Tom Kim as the as the best option here. If you want to go to Cam Young, that would be fine. A little bit of worry about Minwoo. And then the guys below that, I, I, I don't mind. I don't think this is a great spot for Alex Noren, but this is uh, certainly um, a summer of, of great play. Misses the cut at the US Open. He also missed the cut at the Canadian Open. So maybe he's cooling off a bit, but he can win putting contest. I mean, he is one of the best putters that we have out here. He does not miss a lot of fairways. That's not going to be super beneficial here, but it will keep him certainly in his own in his own comfort level. Um, as I kind of look over his metrics and, and look over what I think is going to be important this week, I, I will admit I don't I don't get super excited. Um, the the caveat or the the counter to my lack of excitement on Alex Noren's course fit is that his course history is quite good. You know, the T9 here last year, the T4 in 2021, those were his last two trips. He did miss the cut here in 2020, but we're now, what, four years from that. I, I'm not super worried about it, especially because we're in the midst of probably the best run of his of his career, at least in a long time. If you look at the last 36 rounds for everybody in this field, Alex Noren technically has the best uh, trending number. So the way that this tool works, and I love this tool, is it, it applies everybody's 100 round baseline. What type of golfer are you? And then it looks at how you're playing over the last X number of rounds. I have it set to 36. You could do 24, 12, or anything like that. Um, so you take the baseline and you add or subtract what the golfer is doing right now, and you get this strokes gain trend number. Alex Noren's baseline is, is already good. He adds about a half a stroke per round uh, to his baseline in the last 36 and all of that coming from T to green, which is a good sign. So it's, it's Norin, it's McNeely, it's Pendrith, it's Davis Thompson, it's Akshay that I would say are the hottest golfers in the field. And then if you want to look at that and uh, also uh, throw in the fact that, hey, how are they putting? How are the, you know, is there regression coming? Is there the ability to, to snap back? You'll see that Alex Norin is not, uh, he, he's not upper left, uh, as in, he is in the upper left quadrant, which is the optimal quadrant that you want to be in. But he, I mean, there's probably a dozen or two dozen golfers in that quadrant that are probably in better spots than him. But he and McNeely, of those guys that I talked about, Davis Thompson even, are all in that upper left-hand quadrant, which means they are not even uh, putting to their 100-round baseline. They're not even putting to... Uh, the part of their game that if that comes back, there is more juice to squeeze out of it. So that is better than someone like Taylor Pendrith, who's very much in the second, he's in the second best quadrant, he's in the positive quadrant, but there is probably some putter regression coming for Taylor Pendrith. That, that's the way to read that. Pendrith's been a half stroke per round over his 100 round baseline um, with the flat stick alone, which, which is concerning. It, it is concerning. So that 9K range, as we get down there, you'll see uh, this is where things start to get really interesting. We've got Akshay on a similar schedule as, um, as, as Tom Kim. What we talked about with Akshay last week, I still think does hold court here this week. I, was, I had a lot of exposure to Akshay. He didn't play particularly well on Sunday, but hey, he finishes T5. That's, I would have signed up for that result uh, at the beginning of the week. And he did what we were hoping for, which is drive it really well, 
uh, hit your wedges close, pile up opportunities. He's a very good wedge player. He has turned into a, a good enough putter, especially with that, uh, the, the broom, I believe he's using the broomstick and the jailbird. It might not be the jailbird, but he's like going for all the cheat codes. And now we've got this, this trend line. T60 at the Canadian Open, T22 at Muirfield Village, T16 at the U.S. Open, uh, T5 at the Travelers. Is is this, does this culminate with a victory or does it culminate with a top five finish? I still think this is a really good spot for him. We are not going anywhere and we're not going anywhere, especially because uh, Pendrith is likely to be your most popular golfer in this 9K range, right? People know that Detroit Golf Club is one of the best spots to get Taylor Pendrith, runner-up finish, and T14 in his two trips. Everybody knows he is distance, not accuracy. He is wedges. He is putting. He is all of that. I am cautiously optimistic here. I, I, I believe we're going to get a big ownership number, and I believe that we are due for Pendrith putting regression. So, I, I you know, if if if... Pendrith is a, for most people, a nine and a half out of 10. He's probably a seven and a half out of 10 for me. I, I still find him to be a very positive play, but I am worried about some of the ancillary stuff where he comes in with 25% ownership and gets and, and, and wipes everybody at some point. I'm going to need to see a lot more out of our defending champion, Ricky Fowler. Uh, he did play well for the first time in a while at, at Travelers, but we are seeing uh, a golfer who is just not this. I mean, basically since he won this event last year, right? He was playing so well. It, it finishes with a victory at the Rocket Mortgage last year, and he has not been remotely the same since. I'm going to need to see a little bit more. I do not believe that this is a great spot for Will Zalatoris. I've I've been buying um, a little bit of of Will the last handful of weeks. It has not worked out. We have seen we have seen spurts of it. Rounds one, the Travelers Championship was awesome. He lost strokes every day coming in. The approach play continues to struggle. The putter is not there. This is a a birdie. Fa I mean, I just you know since. He missed the cut at the Zurich, or even since the Masters, the version of, of Will's Zalatoris that we've seen does not set up well for this golf course. And then Steven Yeager is probably quietly the, the, the great contrarian option in this range. You know, if we're going to see a lot of Akshay, if we're going to see a lot of Taylor Pendrith, uh, here's, here's Steven Yeager, whose history at this event is better than Pendrith. Ninth last year, fifth the year before that. The concern that we have coming into this is the putter has gone very, very cold. Uh, since the summer of last year, he was a very good putter, only losing a handful of times through the rest of the year. Now he is only gaining a handful of times. He's actually lost strokes putting in, in seven of his last eight. If he could snap back to anything close to his 100-round baseline, I bet you he's probably one of these very... Let's see what we have here, if I can find... Yeah, here's Steven Yeager in that optimal... Uh, quadrant, no surprise there because this 100 round baseline with the putter is so good. As we enter the AK range, I've, I've got to point out the, the listener league, the run good listener league for this week on Splash is already a third full. Uh, it's probably because it's a $20 entry and it's tiers and it is guaranteed, fully guaranteed. $5,400 in the prize pool as, as long as we keep filling it which we've been doing so and get in now it's already a third percent, uh, a third of the way full and I haven't even posted this video yet. As long as we keep filling it, they keep guaranteeing it. They keep raising it. They're, they're doing a great job. Um, we Our relationship with Splash is really good. I, I, I love all the advancements they're making. Spoiler alert, they are starting to release some of the NFL stuff. And there are some NFL golf kind of crossovers where there'll be almost like one and done style NFL contests. But, or excuse me, like yeah, one and done style NFL contests where maybe you pick a quarterback each week to do... I don't know, passing yards or fantasy, but something like that. So some really good crossovers that are coming. Um, links in the description. Go get signed up. Uh, go deposit and get, get in there because I've got some cool stuff coming with those guys as well. The 8K range. So I'm just going to start with my favorite, which is Davis Thompson. If you've been, if you've been following this channel at all over the past three months, I'm, I'm now ready for this. The, the Davis Thompson train rolls on. He's one of the best Tita Green players that we have in this field. He showed out at Myrtle Beach Classic. He finished T2 there. He finished T9 at the U.S. Open. He's been playing well on, on difficult golf courses, easy golf courses. And I've, I've, <laughs> I'm on the record, I'm sure, at some point saying that I think Davis Thompson is going to win something this summer. And it is probably, it's most likely to be an event like this. Rocket Mortgage, the 3M. I don't know if he's going to play 
Barbasol or Barracuda or whatever else we've got coming up still. I don't know if he's going to play those or if he's going to get a, get himself into the uh, Open Championship if he's not already. Finished T24 here last year. I, I, this, this is the type of event and the type of profile that screams Davis Thompson is uh, trending in the right in the right direction. Wouldn't mind Aaron Rye. I'm not going to spend too much. I would actually wouldn't mind Aaron Rye or Maverick McNeely. Those are both kind of my guys. Both have been playing well. Uh, Rye finished ninth year, no problem. You know, again, if you've been following along, this is this is the type of place that you that you roll those guys out. Robert McIntyre, I, I do find interesting. We are starting to see a little bit of a maturation here from Robert McIntyre ever since. Hmm. Let's call it the Zurich, right? Finishes T8 there, gets a 13th at Myrtle Beach, plays well at the PGA Championship, snaps through and finds victory at the Canadian Open. He did that in a very unsustainable way. He gained eight strokes putting, but he is going to gain two, three, four, five strokes putting every single week, which is great for this week. He drives it well, not straight. He's playing with confidence. We, we need a couple of things to go right for Robert McIntyre, but this is a decent spot to find that. The... Two that I like, um, Ryan Fox would be, Ryan Fox is your your skill set option, right? If you think that Taylor Pendrith is a pretty good option, you should probably think that Ryan Fox is as well. Hits it a mile, can play these wedge fests pretty well, has a great putter. He is a cheaper Taylor Pendrith. That's, that's what you are looking for out of Ryan Fox. And then there is Michael Thorbjornsson who made his professional debut last week. Were you impressed? I think you should be. Uh, he hits it better than what he should. So, so he lost 5.8 strokes ball striking last week. 5.2 of that loss came on Sunday. Things unraveled a bit on Sunday. That's going to happen. We got three pretty darn good rounds out of Michael Thorbjornsson. We are now going to see how quickly he adjusts to PGA Tour life. The 7K range has some really talented guys that are not playing well, you could go on pure talent pretty easily in this range. That's mostly Taylor Moore and Cam Davis is who I'm referring to. I know how bad the stat profile is on Taylor Moore. Trust me, you don't, you don't have to tell me. He's lost 19 strokes, if not more, from T to Green in his, in his last four starts. It's been miserable. He's missed three cuts. He finished nearly dead last at the Travelers Championship. He has a great record at the Rocket Mortgage. Uh, sixth and a T4 in the last two years. I love his game. Not currently, obviously, but I do love his game. Maybe this is a place that fits the eye and snaps him out of this little bit of a funk. It might be a big ask. You don't have to do that. The other one is Cam Davis, who's been obviously playing better because it's difficult to be playing worse than, than Taylor Moore right now. And his history around... Uh, the Rocket Mortgage is, is nearly unmatched, right? The win in 2021, 14th in 2022, 17th in 2023. He'll probably be popular. Maybe the, some of the recent form does keep people off of him. He lost seven strokes ball striking at, at, at Traveler. So again, the, that's talent lacking the form. I also want to point out Luke Clanton here. I believe, and do not quote me on this, I believe he's an amateur. I only have one tournament on him in the database, and it is the U.S. Open from two weeks ago, where he gained 4.2 off the tee, another stroke and a half on approach, and another 1.7 with the putter at Pinehurst. He finished T41. He lost 4.4 around the green. Guess what? If you lose 4.4 around the green at Detroit Golf Club, first off, figure your, figure your life out. Second of all, Second of all, you were not remotely going to contend this week anyway but if he can hit it like this ball strike it like this putt like this you know in a much weaker field i'm quite interested i'm also still trying to catch the the good sam stevens weeks so he's been kind of bouncing around between the corn Ferry tour a little bit and some of these pga tour events so he finished t 10th at myrtle beach he missed the cut at the Charles Schwab. He finished 14th at the Canadian Open. And then uh, last week, or was that two weeks ago, in Wichita, he finished runner-up on the Corn Ferry Tour. So that's his last four. It's three top 14 finishes in his last four across both tours and a variety of, of different field strengths. Confident guy, playing well. I'm not 
I'm not worried about. He has played plenty of PGA Tour events. This would be a really good one to get in on him. The 6 and the 5K range does, does fall off quite a bit. I'm not sure how much you have to get down here considering Tom Kim is only $11,000, but I, I think there are a couple of, of interesting little nuggets here. Firstly, Andrew Novak, who I love, who has missed the cut here in each of the last two years, finished 14th at the Canadian Open. That's the last time we saw him. Is it? How is he not getting more starts? I, I don't know the answer to that. Chandler Phillips has... Back-to-back -back top 12 finishes in his last two, Charles Schwab and the Canadian Open. He's not played this event. He is $6,700. Chris Goderup has not been good since his win at the Myrtle Beach. This would be a skill set play. I'm not ready to go there. I would prefer a skill set play on Alejandro Tosti, who finished 17th at the Charles Schwab. For his size, stature, and all that stuff, he bombs it and makes a lot of birdies uh, along the way. Mac Meisner, $6,400. He's His only bad finish is missing the cut at the U.S. Open, which I'm not going to beat up anybody for. Fifth at Charles Schwab, 13th at Myrtle Beach. He made the cut at the Canadian Open. Uh, he gains across the board, right? Can you find anybody, actually, I can just tell you, anybody in the 6K range who in the last 36 rounds has gained in all four strokes gain categories? Well, first off, Mac is the, the best strokes gain total, and he's gaining throughout the bag. But is there anybody else who has green in all four categories? Doesn't look like it. I'm scrolling through and I, I'm just doing the eye test. I don't really see it here. So I'm going to say no. I'm going to say it's 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 Mac Meisner and, and that is it. The other guys who are playing well in strokes game total are Matty Schmid, though that is a, a hit, that's about to fall off the cliff, right? Because 36 rounds includes um, not only 10 of his rounds. It's only 10 rounds, where, but he's missed five straight cuts. He has really good stuff before that. He has some decent stuff after that. But it, it, this number is about to fall off a cliff if you're, if you're Matty Schmidt. The 5K range, as you can imagine in this field, really falls off a cliff. Patrick Fishburne's probably the most interesting. He's been playing both the PGA Tour and the Corn Ferry Tour. He's got four top 25s in his last six starts. I don't even mind. Stewart Sink is still just long enough on the PGA Tour, I believe. He's been beating up the old guys on the uh, on the Champions Tour, T3, T9, and then he finished 27th at the Canadian Open. And, and this is because of the way he can still hit it off the tee. One of the better spots for him, though uh, I, I lack a lot of excitement there. The... Uh, we've got the, I think he's 15 years old, Miles Russell, right here. He's $5,100. He finished T20 you know, in a Corn Ferry Tour event. He got another start, missed the cut. Uh, those are his only two starts that I have on him. I believe he, he must have just missed. He was in a playoff, I believe, for a U.S. Open spot, and I don't think he got in. The other one that, so if you want, if you want a real flyer, Willie Mack, Willie Mack III is $5,000. He got in this field by winning... The John Shippen, which is an APGA event that was held a couple days ago, last week, I think, and also got into the U.S. Open. He's got some Corn Ferry Tour experience. He's playing well right now. He's only $5,000. You'll be the only person on him. Let's see what the model says. Custom model, rickrungood.com. Let's just do a couple of items. We need to do our weighted strokes gained baseline. So we're going to do um, 10 on weighted strokes gained just because we've got guys across different tours here then we are going to do uh we're going to do like a lot of scoring stuff so we're going to do driving distance 15 we're going to do birdies are better for 15 uh that's birdies are better uh birdies or better gained we are going to do opportunities uh, gained and opportunities plus gained for eight each. These are some good approach metrics. We are we'll do course history. Pretty sticky here. We'll do ten there. We are going to do bonus putting, which I absolutely love. We'll put fifteen on bonus putting, and then we are going to put our final nineteen on easy courses. Just go fill it up. Our number one golfer. Yep, Taylor Pendrith. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to question that. Ben Griffin is the one that I had to question. Ben Griffin is two. Davis Thompson, three. Cam Young, four. Akshay, five. Steven Yeager, sleepy little sleeper there. Six. Tom Kim, seven. Minwoo, Taylor Moore, Keith Mitchell are the top ten. Let's quickly look at Ben Griffin. 
What have you been up to, Ben? Runner-up finish at the Canadian Open. It's a little bit of feast or famine. That's what's going on here. So his good finishes are, are quite good. Top 16s, good metrics. His bad finishes are pretty bad. He withdrew from the PGA Championship. He missed the cut at the Charles Schwab. He missed the cut at the Memorial. He finished nearly dead last at the Travelers. Those are all significantly more difficult fields than this. So when he goes well, he goes really well. McNeely's 13th, just kind of pointing out some notables here. Alex Noren is 14th. Interesting. Okay. All right. Well, we've got work to do. I will see you all on Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Go everything you need is in the link to the description. Sign up for Splash. Sign up for RickRungood.com. I love it. I think you'll love it too. We are rocking and rolling. Let's go. See you in Detroit.